assembled the judgment appeal, we turn over the speaker on the report. Gotcha. Let me take it back. There you go. That's what happens when we have a guest speaker. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful.
good morning and welcome to Grace United Methodist Church on our second day of our second Sunday of Advent. Second day, my goodness, we've already had a full week of it, right? Yeah. Uh, so I invite you to uh, go ahead and bookmark those conversations and wind those down so we can enter into a time of of worship and fellowship here in our sanctuary and then you can pick up on those conversations later after worship over in Grace Hall when we do that speed meet and greet yeah whatever how, whatever they'll tell we'll hear more about that after a while but first we're going to praise and worship God and the Christ our newborn king, I invite you to stand as you feel led and as you're able and join your voices with mine and those of the, the video starting out with Everlasting God by Chris Tomlin.
We'll continue our time of praise and worship with a second video this time, King of My Heart. This one's by Love and the Outcome. Please be seated, and Leah's going to come forward and share our reflection connection. This, yes, this one, this week's hers. Next week's yours. Oh, you go for it. Go for it. I'm Are you totally, going for it? I'm totally flexible. Okay. All right. We've got two wonderful interns that are just dying to share for you with you with you this morning, and we're glad to hear from either one or both. Okay. You go, girl. Good morning. Thank you for being so gracious, Leah. Uh, you know your love this morning? Amen. Do you know that you love this morning? Yes? Okay. Okay, so I was reading this book because Reverend Sandy encourages me to read when I'm not in school. <laughs> She's a great example. Um, there's an old story about Jeb and the flood that tells us something important about faith. Old Jeb was trapped on his roof as the flooded waters rising above his house. As he sat there, a neighbor passed by in his rowboat, offering to take him to higher ground. Don't worry about me, said Jeb. I have faith. The Lord will protect me. A while later, the flood waters still rising. A rescue squad arrived in a powerboat and ordered Jeb to evacuate. No need, Jeb insisted. My faith is strong. I'll be fine. 
A few hours later, when the waters reached the eaves, a National Guard helicopter hovered overhead and lowered a line, but Jeb wouldn't grab hold. The Lord will provide, he said. Not too long after, Jeb's house went under, and Jeb with it. When he arrived at the pearly gates, he was none too pleased. <laughs> Lord, I had such faith in you, Jeb cried. How could you have abandoned me? Like many of us, Jeb had great faith, but it was a faith built only upon miracles that come with flashes of light and trumpet blasts. It might be a kind, in truth, God often responds to our faith in humbler ways. It might be a kind driver who lets us merge when we're stressed from sitting in the traffic, or it, it could be a newspaper article that describes a support group we desperately need. Or perhaps it comes in a song on the radio that brings us a cherished, fortifying memory. Each day, angels visit the doorsteps of the faithful leaving gifts that quietly offer God's grace, comfort, and protection. All we have to do is recognize them and pick them up. This is a great, a quote from a great theologian. For those who believe in God and understand the fullness of their divine nature, common sense, okay, for those who believe in God and understand the fullness of their divine nature, common sense does not negate faith. It is just another tool in the shed. And that great theologian is me. I wrote this. Yeah. I'm just joking. Amen. Thank you so much, Vet. <laughs> you awesome. Leah, did you want to share as well? Just keep on going? Okay. We'll hear from you a little later, right? Okay. All right. Vet, that was awesome. I like that. That's cool. Common sense. I can't usually find that one in my toolbox. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's continue our time of praise worship and sing our last song for this section of worship, Star Child. It's in your black, little black hymnal book there if you want to have a book to go along with. It's number 2095, and we're doing all five verses and then the refrain. Amen. Now I invite Reverend Sandy and Leah to come forward now and give us our news and exciting announcements for the coming week. Good morning and welcome to worship at Grace United Methodist Church this morning. We pray that you have a powerful experience of God as you worship with us. We do have some announcements to let you know about, so we have a, quite a few, so hang on. Absolutely, and we want to remind everybody that after service today, we have our speed and meet, and what that is is a fun way where we can get to know each other in a different and exciting way. And so how we have it set up is in um, Grace Hall, you'll see some chairs that are in a U-shape. And for those who want to really be remain seated for the entire event we ask you to sit in the inside of the horseshoe and those who you 
of you who are willing to move, and movement equates to shifting one seat to the right. Um, so for those who would like to move, we ask you to sit on the outside. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ask you a series of questions. So like the first question is, tell us what your funniest moment on Christmas morning was. And maybe that moment, like for me, for example, um, was when my, as kids, actually we were adults at the time, but we would go and we would hide a series of gifts and have my dad do a scavenger hunt. Come to find out the gift was under his bed, right? <laughs> So you have three minutes to tell your story or answer the question. Then there's going to be an alarm that goes off or a buzzer that goes off. And then the person sitting right across from you will have three minutes to tell their story to the same question. Another buzzer will go off. And then we're going to ask the people on the outside to shift to the right. So that's what it's going to be about today. We hope you come and join us. Um, and also there's going to be food. So that's... It's always a good food, food will get you there, right? It's like speed dating. How many of you have ever done that? <laughs> Aww. Uh, oh, yeah. I've seen it on movies, so it looks like fun, right? Yep. Well, we look forward to that. <laughs> you hush there, Dennis. You hush. All right. A big thank you for turning in your membership updates. We have a wonderful, diverse congregation. If you have yet to turn in your update, Please see Christine McCready. Where are you, Christine? Raise your hand. Um, if you're not sure if you need to see her, then you probably need to see her um, and talk to her. And she thanks you in advance. Awesome. And reminder that on the 10th, there is, uh, we are helping out at Culver's as a way to raise money for our park, um, play in the park type of ministry where we go out to the park and help the homeless. So we encourage you, if it's called upon your heart, just join us at Culver's. All right, very good. And we had our first announcement last week about the angel tree. It's not an actual tree, but the little tags were in the shape of a tree. Um, just on the door to the left as you exit the sanctuary, there's still about, I don't know, six or seven kids that we need to have sponsored for Christmas. And so you'll take a tag. You'll see the age uh, and gender of your child that you will sponsor, and you'll go and get a few Christmas presents for that child, um, or maybe a few, um, if you want to sponsor more than one child. And then it, once you take your tag, if you would write your name on the corresponding number on the door jam there, I think you'll see what I'm talking about when you get there. Um, but we need to have those children sponsored because our Christmas presents are due next Sunday, the 14th, so they can be delivered on the 15th. Excellent. And uh, as a reminder for Sunday Fellowship, for those of you who would like to sign up for refreshments, um, we encourage you to do that. The sign up is in the narthex. And uh, if you have any questions, we ask you to talk to Luann. Um, an announcement that the PBJ, Peanut Butter and Jelly Ministries, is an ongoing outreach program at Grace. Each week we prepare 36 sack lunches for distribution to the homeless in our community. The Pantry of Supplies is running short, so if you can provide donations of peanut butter, jelly, bread, chips, sandwich bags, napkins, or treats, it would be greatly appreciated. Volunteers are always welcome to help assemble the sack lunches. It's service after the service in Grace Hall during fellowship. If you have any questions, talk to Pam and Frederick. And poinsettias are going to be ordered in the next few weeks, and you can order them now. And so that's a way to help decorate our sanctuary for Christmas um, Sunday and Christmas Eve. And it's also a way to honor those that we love as well. And so there's order forms that are actually in the back of the pews. You can get those. Our ushers have forms as well. Um, or if you have any questions, you can talk to... Yep, there we go. Yep, you can talk to her. They are $15, um, just as a reminder. So certainly... Only ten. So we've only had 10 ordered so far, so yeah. order up. Next okay, next yeah. Sunday is the last Sunday to order. Absolutely. All right, the United Methodist Men are going to host another game night on Saturday, December the 13th at 6.30. Snacks are provided. If you have any questions, talk to Russell, our UMM president, but that should be another fun evening. What kind of games? What kind of games? Board games, all mm. kinds. 
card games, board games. You can bring Twister if you want to, Janice, but you might be the only <laughs> one. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure I like that game. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and also we have a, we have a church-wide caroling coming up. It'll be at Aspen Winds. It'll be next Sunday, December 14th, uh, from 12 to 1 o'clock. And if you have any questions, you can talk to Miss Kathy. All right, and last but not least, last week, Miranda Walker, one of our youth, um, talked to us about a fundraiser she's doing with her Casper United Methodist Church um, for a youth trip to Youth 2015 next summer. Um, so if you're interested in helping her out with her envelopes, you pick an envelope and whatever the number is on it, like one through 25 or something, um, then you put that number of dollars in it. Five, you put five dollars in it. So talk to Miss Miranda if you have any questions. Awesome. That's all right. Right. We have some birthdays and anniversaries, I think, this week. The eighth, Miss Betty Bean. Yay. And on the 12th is Linda. And the 13th, Wanda Denton. Wonderful. Do we have any anniversaries? No anniversaries? Well, happy All birthday right. to so everyone. Yeah, Miss Juliana has a birthday cake, so if it's your birthday week and you want to put a donation there, I always suggest $1 for every year you've been alive. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> and that <laughs> money goes to help people in our community. Let us continue with our worship.
We light our second Advent candle to remind us of God's gift of love. Let us be alive with the awareness that the God of love is the source of all mercy and blessing. God is ever giving and calling us to live in love. As we wait for Christ's arrival in this holy season of watching, may we proclaim with our lives the healing and good news the Messiah brings. Jesus is creating a full harvest of righteousness and goodness in us. May we yield in abundance of love overflowing on the day of Christ. Please remain standing as we sing the Christmas carol melody.
Please be seated. And I invite the children to come forward for children's time. morning. It takes us all a while to get up here and get settled. So I wanted to tell you about, um, I got to go, where are my notes? Um, Friday, we went to Casper and we got to see Connor compete in Lego Robots and Alex Mork was there and he competed too and we had so much fun and it was really cool. Um, and they did really well and their teams did really well. But um, before I wanted to ask you and tell you about that, because that was cool, I wanted to ask you what is the best thing about being an adult? You don't have to clean your room. <laughs> I'll let your parents talk that one out with you later. Some would argue you have to clean the whole house. Well, actually, I don't. But some other adults in the house do clean the house a lot. Which, what would you say, Gracie? What else? Oh, your grandma cleans the house? Yeah, thanks, Grandma. Yeah, coming through. You never But what do you think? When you get to be an adult, what's going to be cool about that? Go ahead. Do what you want. Yes. What? You get a job that pays you. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> True. What else? Go ahead. Uh, they do the cooking. They do the cooking. Yeah. 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 They do all the meals. Yeah. That's yeah. one of my part favorite parts about being an adult. Is I get to cook. Yeah. Go ahead. You can own your own restaurant. Nice. Yes, that's cool. Yeah, you could do th all these things. Do you think you're, the adults are boring, or do you think they're lots of fun? No. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> half and half. Eh, whatever. So you get to do all these great things, but you're boring. Why do you think adults are boring? They're so serious. They're always serious. They don't have toys? <gasps> Some adults have toys. Go ahead. Yeah, because they're boring because they have to make you clean your room. <laughs> yeah, that's actually very true. Yeah, I heard one time that adults are boring because they have to worry about all the stuff they're doing and the stuff that they're doing, you're doing. You have chores, yes. What were you going to say, Emery? <sighs> <sighs> yeah, sometimes their job makes them leave. Yes, that's true. What's the best thing about being a kid? Go ahead. You get toys. And you don't have to buy your own things because your parents will buy it for you. Yay. Go ahead, Emery. Youth. youth. What do you mean by that? Go more. Just youth in general. It's the best thing about being a kid is youth. I have so many answers in my head for that one. Go ahead. What, what were you going to say, Gracie? Best thing about being a kid? Think on it. Go ahead. You don't have to change diapers. Good one. Yes. Very true. Yeah. Did you think of one, Gracie? Best thing about being a kid? No? Okay, so this speaker that talked to the kids at the competition over the weekend said that it's amazing. He had a whole list. I tried to remember them all, but I couldn't remember them all. Um, but he has a list of books and movies and things where we don't, where there's, we ask the kids to do things, but we don't ask the adults to do things. Coming down? All right, you can come down. Come here. Whoop. Whoop. How's that? Better? Mm-hmm. So think of movies and books where you ask the kids to do things, like Harry Potter, right? An owl came and said, you're going to go to school and you're going to do this. What are some other things? Do you remember? Books and stories you've read. Another example he had was um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And there's a wardrobe, and they ask the kids to go believe and do these great things, right? Can you think of any others? The boxcar children got to do amazing thing. Yes, good one. Mm hmm yeah. Alice in Wonderland followed a white rabbit, right? She did amazing things, yeah. 
was the other one? Oh, the movie that's out right now with Baymax. Big Hero 6, right? And so he goes and he does amazing things. Why do you think, oh, the other one that we like, Star Wars. They ask the teenager, Luke, to go do amazing things, right? Why do you think they ask the kids to do things and not the adults? Because the adults are boring. No. Why do you think they ask the kids? Sometimes adults are, are frail. <laughs> frail. Mm. And sometimes the, the adults think the kids are just playing a game. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I like today's scripture. So this all ties into today's scripture because it says that um, let a child, or it says a child shall lead them. Do you think you guys are leaders? <gasps> no, with all your toys and all your chores and all your cleaning your room, do you think you're leaders? Why do you think that the Bible says a child will lead them? Why should we follow children? That's a tough one. Why do you think? Go ahead, Juliana. Because you're more creative, kids are more creative than adults? Why do you think that is? You guys are brilliant, by the way. Why? You have imagination. Does that mean I don't have imagination? It, I have an imagination, but it's kind of fogged over by all of this boring stuff that I have to do. And children, they're allowed to believe, and they're allowed to wonder, and they're allowed to go forth. And so when we talk about child shall lead them, we need to pay attention to our children because you guys believe and do amazing things. Do you think so? No? I think so. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, go ahead. So-so? Just so-so. Yeah, so I think you need to hold on to that. And as we enter the Christmas season and there's all sorts of holiday magic and wonder and everything, I think all this comes back to when I deal with children, there's very little judgment. They're like, yep, that's who you are. Okay, let's go with that then. And as adults, we kind of get clouded in all that kind of fun stuff and we always worry about things because we're adults and that's what we do. But kids, we need to listen to you because you can go and do amazing things. Thank you for coming up and keep being a kid. Okay? All right, thank you. I don't think that was have a special privilege today to be able to um, welcome two new members into our church community. So I invite Brad and Laura Kushel to come forward. They went through quite a process to try to decide if they wanted to join Grace United Methodist <laughs> Church. And if you were at church conference, you would know all about that. But you got all your answers. Um, so I'm going to sing your questions today. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> Man, that would have been good, though, if I had. <laughs> yeah, Michelle. Michelle. All right. So um, Brad and Laura have been members at different churches before, but never United Methodist Church. So I have two questions to ask them. One will receive them into membership in the United Methodist Church, and the second will receive them into membership at Grace United Methodist Church. And while we're doing this, if you would open your hymnals to page 38 and be ready there. So Brad and Laura, as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Okay. And as members of this congregation of Grace United Methodist Church, Will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? <coughs> All right, those are good answers. <laughs> so if you're at page 38, join with me in the commendation and welcome. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified 
And so the people said, welcome. I offer to you your official membership certificates and the coveted gold dove pen um, that you may put, I know, <laughs> you didn't know you were getting gifts, did you? You get to put that on your name tag so that all people know that you are members of Grace United Methodist Church. So welcome. They did indeed take the plunge. <laughs> I let Leah borrow my um, cordless mic today since she's preaching. You, I got to do a lot of stuff with my hands. It's hard to, to deal with this handheld thing. As we turn to our time of prayer, we absolutely um, pray for our new members, which is so exciting to be able to grow our community. Also, um, we need to add a few others to our prayer list. From Janice Fisher, please continue to pray for my family. They are getting ready to sell my dad's house, and I pray for their peace of mind above all else. It's been a struggle, so we pray for you, absolutely. And also, we'd like to add to our list, um, Faith Barnes, um, Alice Ports' granddaughter, and you know Jenny and Joshua. Um, so Alice says, please say a prayer for Faith Barnes. She's really having a tough time right now. Also, we add to our list, um, Dennis and Donald and Alice Davis. Um, Dennis and Donald's um, dad, Ernie Davis, passed away last Saturday, and we celebrated his life yesterday morning at Wiederspahn. Were there any other prayer cards that I missed? Let us go now to the Lord our God in prayer. Holy God of life and light, we seek you this Advent season. But sometimes we don't really appreciate the ways you reveal yourself. We want warmth, brightness, and comfort for Christmas. But sometimes you call us to a different place. We want to gather with friends and family and loved ones but you beckon us to venture out to places where there are strangers. You challenge us to welcome those we do not know, embrace those we do not like, comfort those we'd rather scorn. Loving God, why can't we just stay cozy? Just as we are settling into decorated homes, roaring fires, and cups of cocoa, you remind us that those of those who have no homes and warmth. Exactly the moment we nestle in with friends and laughter, you bring to mind those who have neither. Holy God of life and light, Lift our eyes beyond our own shelter and comfort to be emboldened by your spirit to offer comfort to others. For as you have promised, you are Emmanuel, God with us, with all of us. We pray that we do not keep you bound up in soft hay in a quaint manger or tight within our hearts but that we set you loose upon the world so that with us and through us you might bring peace on earth and goodwill to all. Holy God, we pray these things in your name as you taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the faulting together, and the fatling together. And the little child shall lead them, the cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious." The word of the people for the people of God. Or the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> Thanks be to God. <laughs> Amen. Oh, thank you. May I borrow your stand here? Yes. I, I'm a talker and a hand waver. Awesome. That's perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Ah. Would you all pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. You know, last week we talked about, I briefly described how the family tradition in my household is if you touch a gift, it goes back, right? And well, you know, as a kid, and, and you guys kind of have to trust me on this one now that I'm a parent, but... Reality is, when a parent makes a rule, it's not just because we're making a rule, but usually there's a reason for the rule, right? And my sister and I, we gave my parents a very good reason. <laughs> yeah. So my sister Tina, she's three years older than I, we tend to, when it comes to Christmas time, we tend to start searching for our gifts. Yeah. And so I think I remember the first time, it was probably when we were stationed in Minnesota. At this point, we were waiting for base housing. So we were in this tiny little um, cabin. And I don't even really, it just remembered, it was like living space. There was really no rooms. And so there, was no, there were no closets. There were no doors. It was just this communal area. But there was one closet, and that was in the living room area. So when Christmas rolled around, and my parents pushed the couch up in front of the, the closet, <laughs> I don't know. So Tina and I, well, we earnestly searched. And then when we were stationed over in uh, Spokane, and we were in a house, and in this house, the basement was two-thirds of the way finished, and there was this one tiny little room, and I've never experienced this before, but the room was so unfinished, it actually still had a dirt pile in there. And so there's just dirt in this room. And so it was a spooky room. And then there's also the furnace in this room, which made it extra spooky. So my parents, I think they thought that this would be a really good place to hide the gifts because it would be a barrier for us. But no. <laughs> no. Nope. We earnestly searched. And then when we were stationed in Alaska, now at this point, my sister and I, we are now in high school, okay? <laughs> so we are in high school, and her bedroom, my sister's bedroom was in the basement. The rest of the house was up on the top floor. So it gave us ample time, right? And in the basement, there were, were a series of wardrobe boxes, and you guys might remember them. Um, they're the tall boxes, and they have the metal piece that goes across, and then you can hang your suits or coats or whatever. But the interesting thing about wardrobe boxes is there's that little void space on the bottom, 
that if you throw something in there, it's really hard to retrieve because you can't reach down and get it. I do not know what possessed Tina and I to look in these wardrobe boxes. But sure enough, we found our gifts. It's that earnest searching. Today we um, continue with our sermon series and we're taking a look at gifts. We're taking a look at gift exchanges and role reversals. We're also considering the fact that many times in our lives, God gives us a gift that we don't expect. Many times we don't even know how to, to handle it or deal with it. Or we don't even receive it well. And for this Advent season, we're actually going to be hearing about the gifts and the gifts that God gives us through the prophet Isaiah and his words. And that's what we heard in the scripture reading this morning. But the times of the, that, the times that the prophet Isaiah was writing in were actually times of great turmoil. As you may remember, um, you know, Israel, they were one community, one territory. And then in time, they became split into the northern and the southern kingdoms. But they were still fighting against one another, you know, continuously battling. And to make things even worse, it, uh, Syria, or um, uh, let me think real quick. I'm sorry, Assyria, yes, the Assyrian Empire, they were beginning to grow and get more powerful and stronger. And they were seeing that, you know, those trade routes, that's something I'm pretty darn interested in. And they wanted to take them away. And so they started fighting as well. And as they started rising up in power, people started getting a little nervous. And so they started making allies with one another to try to keep them off. So this was definitely a time of great turmoil, a time of war, a time of injustices. A time where people lost their lives. A time where there were just many losses. And in, um, in times of this turmoil, we have the prophet Isaiah who's writing to us. And in today's scripture reading, he's actually creating this utopia world. He's trying to encourage us. And in the scripture reading, we actually hear him say that the predators and the prey, they're going to lie down together. And that the lions, now the lions, they're going to stop eating meat. Who does that, right? And then that children, no matter where they are, they're going to be safe. And that enemies will become friends. You know, at first glance, when I looked at this scripture, I said, uh-huh, sure. <laughs> yeah, utopia? But the reality is, is it okay to think and dream about a utopia? Is it okay to have that hope for something maybe in the far-off future? Is it okay to dream and allow our, our minds to be open to new possibilities? You know, when we're looking at this scripture, we're actually seeing that it's not a change of behaviors. Oh, I'm not going to eat meat today. It's a full-blown transformation. And you know, in the early, the early Christians, they were hearing the echoes of that hope, of that transformation, of that future. And they were hearing it through the prophets like Isaiah and many others. And in today's world, as Christians, we hear that hope as well, that echo. And we've seen it through the coming of Christ. We've seen that transformation. We see that love. You know, the idea of prayer to and pray, lying down together, enemies becoming friends, that's not a new thing, because in reality, we're constantly sending videos to each other about this, right? We're posting them on, on uh, Facebook. How many times have we posted the video of the lion who is helping the two little piglets? Or, or yeah, the two little piglets and they're suckling with the lion. Or how many times do we see the picture of the cat and the dog cuddling together? 
Or on YouTube, there's a really cool picture or video where there's actually a dog who's stuck behind one of those um, in outdoors in your, in your house. And he didn't know how to get out of it, so the cat went back and forth to try to teach it to get out. And he got out, right? But we, we tend to like these different um, videos. You know, in 2004, the nation was mesmerized by the baby hippo, Owen. Yep, and the old 130-year-old tortoise, Measy, or Maisie. And we were mesmerized. We saw it on the news all the time. We saw how in um, 2004 there was this huge wave that came down and took away um, the parents, or separated Owen from his parents. What's really unique about hippos is they are actually, they suckle, they're young, they need to be with their moms for a four-year time period. Maybe it's not unusual for humans, I don't know. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and, and so it was a big loss for Owen to have her mom swept downstream. And so what they did in Kenya is they brought, her, brought him to this wilderness site. In the wilderness site, they didn't really know what to do, but they decided to put him with Owen. Most, mostly they decided because it was a size issue. You know, the hippo is pretty big, the tortoise is pretty big, so they put him together. Now Owen, he immediately bonded to Maisie. Maisie didn't like it. Maisie didn't appreciate it. Maisie is a male, by the way. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so, but in time, the relationship changed. It was transformed. And in time, Maisie started teaching Owen how to graze for vegetation. And in time, they started bedding down together. And in time, they started bathing together. And in time, they were transformed. And they were transformed in such a way that Owen, which is this huge hippopotamus who has huge and powerful jaws, is sitting there grooming or licking uh, Maisie and his tiny little head. Right? They were transformed. We see stories of this all the time. And we're fascinated by these oddities. But you know, I would like to think that it's more than just an oddity. I would like to think that it's more than us saying, ooh, those are really cute, cute animals. I would like to think it's more than just us looking for something unique. I would like to think that this transformation is about hope. We want to hope for something different in the future. We want to hope for that transformation. We want to hope for a new life, a new beginning of change. And that's what I think all of these passionate viewings of videos are about. Is that hope? About 15 years ago, um, we bought our first house here in Cheyenne. It was over by the YMCA. And at that time, I absolutely loved to, to garden. I loved to mow. I loved to keep, do yard work. You know, keep in mind, that was 15 years ago. I'm not into it now. But 15 years ago, I was. And the previous owners of that house, they obviously took a lot of care in the lawn. And so I decided I wanted to keep it, too. But in this little corner on the lawn, there was this growth, and I kind of assumed it was weeds. And frankly, it was just a blemish on my nice lawn, and I didn't like it. And so I kind of took some intentional extreme means. So I took chemicals. I took herbicides out there, and I'm just pouring it out there. Does not kill it, you know? So now I'm taking tools out there. But then I start to realize Leah plus a chainsaw equals damage. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of did quickly abandon that. But thanks to the chemicals and the tools, I ended up hacking away enough at this weed. So now I can mow it. And every week I am out there mowing down this weed. And this dance went on 
for four long years until we moved out of that house. I was out there mowing it down. I wanted a nice, pretty lawn, right? Now, a couple years ago, I took my daughter back to the house. I wanted to show her where her parents, her first, uh, the first house that her parents lived in. And sure enough, as you're probably guessing, there's this big old tree. This big old tree that's out there. This tree that is shading half the front lawn. And I kept thinking, you know, what would it have been like if instead of me whacking it down, I spent the time watching it grow, watching it strengthen, watching it provide shelter? No, but I chose not to. But the reality is, um, sometimes in our world, our world just gets scary, right? And when I get scared, oftentimes I shut down. You guys may not do that. It's just, you probably have healthier ways, coping mechanisms. (laughs) But for me, I just shut down. And all I see are weeds, right? I can't see the hope. And sometimes it's really hard that we have to recognize that there is difficulties in our lives. We have to recognize that, you know, there are losses, many losses. There are inequities. There are injustices. And we feel it and we see it in our lives. We see the stories where a man who is in constant pain every day because he has a degenerative disease. And he's just in pain. And we hear that story of a parent who's trying to have a relationship with their children. And we hear that story of a young youth who nearly overdosed on antidepressants. We hear those stories. That is our reality. But there is an opportunity. We can choose not to keep cutting down those weeds. And we can allow the hope to grow. And that's what I love about today's scripture reading. uh, Isaiah talks about just that little stump of growth. It doesn't have to be a big old tree before we see hope. We don't need the perfect job before we see the hope. But rather, we just need that tiny little bit of seed, that tiny little bit of growth. And isn't that what hope is about? It's that tiny little action which eventually leads us to that transformation. So my hope for you is that this week, you get a chance to look to see where the stumps are in your life and where we may think that there's no growth, that there's no hope. And maybe we can see that there is. Maybe we can be like those two girls who are earnestly searching for something. Maybe we can earnestly search for hope. May it be so. Amen. Amen. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 15. There you'll find a service of word and table. I will invite you to join with me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the bread of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, 
We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to be a light to the nations. You scatter the proud in the imagination of their hearts and have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you send empty away. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On that night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And that same night, he took the cup and gave thanks and shared it. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I invite our communion stewards to come forward.
I invite you to stand and join with us in our closing hymn. As you're standing, I invite you to reach out your hand to those around you. Don't let anybody stand alone, but let us be connected. Let us be the body of Christ in this place. And as you go from this place, may the love of God, the grace and peace of Jesus the Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love now and forever. Amen. Amen.